Hi folks, um, I haven't done one of these little live uh, thingies in a long time, so I thought today I might do one for a little bit. Tommy had to run uh, some errands and do some shopping, and unfortunately I get extremely winded and tired very, very quickly these days. Um, my oncologist thinks it's because of my um, medication for, for the leukemia that I'm taking. And uh, I kind of hope not, but it really looks that way. Anyway, you know, I wanted to talk about something for a few minutes that has really been weighing on my mind. The reason that our nation is in such a state of conflict and it's such a mess today is really because from day one, uh, young people in America are taught lies and misinformation. The truth of the matter is the United States of America has been a place of conflict, confusion, division from its very onset, from the very beginning of the formation of this country. We were founded on nothing but conflict, arguments, you know, um, disagreement. Um, it amazes me how many people in our country have probably never read the Federalist Papers. You've probably heard uh, the term the Federalist Papers. If you have not read them, seriously, go online. You can go to Kindle, you can go to Amazon, uh, you can get them for free, and you need to read the Federalist Papers. In those papers, uh, three of our founding fathers, including John Jay and Alexander Hamilton, um, they wrote articles that were published in New York State newspapers uh, during the time that the Constitution was being put together and uh, was about to be ratified. And they were making arguments for the Constitution of the United States of America. The Federalist Papers were articles written by three of our founding fathers and they were making arguments in the state of New York for the ratification of the American U.S. Constitution. The truth of the matter is, if you read those papers, you'll see that from the beginning, from the very onset, there were people in this country who were extremely, rabidly against the Constitution. They did not want uh, a federal government, singular federal government that sat over the entirety of what was then the United States. And of course, back then, uh, you were not looking at all 50 states as we have them today. You were looking at the original colonies, and that was about it. Uh, they looked at other areas as territories, but they were unsettled, unexplored territories. Uh, in the Federalist Papers, you will read how that there were people, and not just a few either, there were a lot of people who were fighting the ratification of the Constitution in favor of there being the establishment of several different individual separate countries on the North American continent and in the territories that now constitute the United States of America. This was a massive conflict. This was a major point of contention from the very beginning. But sadly, we in the United States of America are not taught this. I grew up in school hearing all this cockamamie baloney about, you know, waving flags and, oh, the United States of America, everybody gleefully ran in to sign the Constitution. Oh, our founding fathers were so thrilled to do this. And, you know, everybody wanted it baloney. That is not even remotely the case. 
there were many people in the the uh, the new Americas at that time who were not interested at all in a constitution that bound all the states together under one singular federal government. When you understand that, it helps you to understand that from the beginning until now, 200 and some odd years later, there are people still in this country, including many of the lying dogs in Washington, who swear an oath to the Constitution when in fact they have no interest in the Constitution. The Constitution today is no more embraced by the whole than it was at its very onset. In the very beginning, there were people who, who didn't want it, and today there are people who do not want it. I've been saying and warning, and you've heard me say this if you've ever watched any of my live videos. Uh, I've been saying for years that I got to go around and pick up Tommy now. I guess that store didn't have what he needed. But I've been saying for years that uh, the Republican Party wants a civil war in America. And I stand by that today as much as I've ever stood by it. The Republican Party is not interested in the U.S. Constitution. It does not serve them, and they do not want it. And they have been looking for an app. They've been looking for a way that they might be able to discard uh, the Constitution altogether and, uh, and pursue other forms of government, other types of government. And the quickest and easiest way for them to achieve this end, hold on one second, where do you want me to go next? Just go to the other suit place. Okay. You go like you're going into the mall, it's easier. Than okay. The but they have the easiest way for uh, the Constitution to be dissolved would be for civil conflict to break out so that... Uh, they could declare martial law, and declaring martial law, they could suspend the Constitution. That is the easiest route. And then, having suspended the Constitution, they can turn around and they can claim that we're in need of writing an all-new Constitution. The fact of the business is, the Constitution is a compromise. It's a lot like Clinton's don't ask, don't tell policy, which was an effort to end discrimination against LGBT people in military service. But at the same time, he was trying to coddle the Republicans who were against that. And, you know, and he was trying so hard to kind of play the both ends against the middle. You know, he was trying to satisfy two completely opposite groups of people. Well, the U.S. Constitution is the same identical thing. Uh, you have a form of government where there are 50 separate states. Each state is supposed to be sovereign and self-willed and self-governed, except where the interests of the whole supersede the interests of the part and that is determined by the uh, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court determines when the interests of the whole, the federal, supersedes the interests of the part, the state, or vice versa. When the uh, interests of the federal, the whole, does not supersede the interests of the state. And so you, in those cases, you know, the Supreme Court determines that the federal government has overstepped its authority and that the states retain authority in that particular matter. So anyway, uh, so now you've got, you know, basically you've got a constitution and a form of government that is trying to literally give 
50 individual states, you know, sovereignty and self-will and self-government, and yet at the same time they're saying, well, but there are instances where the uh, there have to be laws, there have to be regulations which oversee, uh, override, you know, any laws or any regulations in any one of the given states. As I've read the, uh, as I've read uh, this document that I'm talking about, who, whose name has eluded me at the moment, uh, it's interesting how the writers talk about and they assume things that are not in fact things that have been proven to be not at all true. For instance, in, in the Federalist Papers, there you go, it finally clicked back in there. In the Federalist Papers, you know, uh, the writers talk about uh, men in federal office will be aware that they are representing the nation as a whole and that they are not in a state office, you know, they're not governor, they're not a state senator, what have you, and therefore they're not going to be representing the interests only of their state, but they're going to be representing the interests of the whole, the, the entire nation. Well, we've seen with characters like Joe Manchin, Kristen Cinema. We've seen that there are elected officials who in fact um, act as though the interests of their state supersedes everything. And therefore, if it doesn't suit them and if it doesn't suit their constituency, so they say, then I'm going to keep it from the rest of the nation. So we've got people from one state here and one state there. We've got one person, one person from two different states that are literally preventing and holding up the show for every single citizen, every single citizen in all 50 states. So there are 48 states that are being affected by the representatives from two states because these people are not doing what the authors of the Federalist Papers suggested. They are not being mindful of the fact that they are uh, part of the federal system, part of the federal government, that they should be looking at all matters from the standpoint of one who represents the interests of the whole and not just the part. So anyway, I, I, I just, I don't know, this gets on my nerves sometime. Yeah, I keep seeing the division and the strife that's going on, and Tommy and I were talking today. He's gone into another store here, and I'm, I get too tired too fast uh, these days. I get extremely exhausted, so I'm just waiting in the car for him. So I thought I'd do this while I was waiting. But, you know, when I look at the conditions on which this nation was founded, and then I look at the turmoil and the confusion and the debate that goes on today, there's absolutely no difference. Nothing has changed. You know, Jesus said, if the root of the tree is evil, then that tree is going to be evil, period. You're, you, you, you know, there's an old saying, you can't change a leopard spots, you know. Uh, the truth of the matter is, the United States of America, when it was settled, it began with conflict. It began with arguments. It began with debate. Uh, this notion that, you know, oh, the pilgrims all came over here, bless God, and they were all of one mind and one accord. And boy, when the Constitution was written, you know, everybody was just thrilled. Everybody was clapping and they were so happy because, yay, we created a new government. That's a bunch of garbage, folks. That is not even remotely how this country came about. There are people... 250 years ago that didn't want the form of government that we have. They didn't want the Constitution that we have. And that mentality 
exists through today. What's happening today is not new. It is a continuation of the same old thing. For all these years, we have had people fighting for our Constitution. And we have had people fighting for all these years against our Constitution. And so we need to understand when we go to our voting places and when we go to the polls, every time, every election, we need to understand that at the heart of what we're voting on is a commitment to the form of government that was delivered to us by our founding fathers. Do we want to be a constitutional republic or do we want to be divided and separated? According to the Federalist Papers, uh, the authors said that there were a number of men, uh, even in the earliest days of our nation, who were advocating for a number of different country. They wanted um, America, they wanted the United States to be a number of separate countries. And they basically were looking at it like, well, you know, this is like Europe, you know, this, this continent can be divided up and carved into, uh, and they were talking about, you know, maybe four or five different countries. And the authors of the Federalist Papers talks about the fact that if you're going to emulate Europe in terms of uh, design, then you have to realize you're going to be emulating Europe in terms of history. You're going to have nation warring against nation. You're going to have one nation looking at another area and saying, hey, they've got resources. They've got things that we really could use that we really need. So why don't we expand, you know, why don't we uh, overcome them and make them part of our country? And, you know, so you wind up creating a whole brand new list of potential conflicts and wars and troubles. And part of their argument for uh, the Constitution of the United States was that this would help to prevent such regional conflicts within our um our continent and uh, people who can't think past the end of their nose think that dividing this country up you know California can go independent uh, uh, our, um, Alaska can go independent Texas can go independent you know New England can go independent New York can go independent and they've got all these ideas for how the nation could be divided up and they don't for even half a second you know, these idiot militia people in Michigan, these stupid people in Texas and uh, Florida, you know, who think that dividing this country up, you know, division is never the answer to very many things. Uh, dividing things up and separating yourselves and crawling off into your own separate little pockets is very seldom the right answer for very many things. And yet we've got a lot of people in this country who are given, uh, who have given themselves over to this mentality rather than unity and unifying. But in order to unify, we have to understand that there is going, there's absolutely going to be, uh, issues that require compromise. And compromise is not always easy. Compromise doesn't always make us happy. But compromise is necessary to the uh, peace and general welfare of the nation. And if we're not willing, you know, we've got people now who are just having fits over issues like gay marriage because the federal uh, Supreme Court came in and made a decision concerning gay marriage. And having done so, they created law that applied to all 50 states. So you've got some states who said, yeah, but we voted against gay marriage. And then you've got other states that said, well, we voted for it. You know, we approved it. Obviously, the states that approved it are perfectly happy with a federal law uh, that is approving of it. And then the states that voted against it are having fits.
because they want to claim that uh, this new law, you know, supersedes their rights and their authorities to self-government. Uh, not recognizing they don't want to accept that our government is working the way it was designed to work. You know, it always cracks me up when I see people griping and groaning about the the uh, Supreme Court, you know, making decisions and how uh, it becomes law. I've, I've seen people, ignorant people, talk about, you know, what? Well, that isn't how it works. It's the job of Congress to make law. No, 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 no. That's not how the 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 Constitution has designed our government. There are any number of ways that things can become law in the United States of America, and some of them are, are um, brought about through the executive branch, some are brought about through the uh, legislative branch, and some of them are brought about through the uh, judicial branch. You know, each of these three branches has the ability to create law. And yet, of course, we have a system of checks and balances. So basically, in the end, the system is designed so that if one branch does in fact create law, that the other branches are able to um, check them, you know, and make certain, make absolutely certain that um, things fall within the confines of the Constitution. Uh, anyway, so all I can tell you is this, and I never dreamed I'd be saying this. I spent the first half of my life as a registered Republican. Uh, I repented of that, so please don't <laughs> don't start writing me all these negative messages. But I'm going to tell you, folks, to, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. If this country is to remain a, constitu a constitutional republic, you cannot under any circumstances at any time for any candidate, I don't care if he walks on water and heals the sick and cleans the leper, you cannot vote for any candidate that has an R behind their name. Because at this point, the Republican Party with Trump especially, has tipped their hand and they have revealed their plan to ultimately do away with our Constitution and establish a form of government that is no longer constitutional democracy, favoring either a theocracy, an oligarchy, you know, favoring uh, authoritarianism. But if we're going to maintain a constitutional democracy, the only party in this country, and I say this having observed for many years, even when I was a Democrat, I mean a Republican, um, I used to watch the way that Democrats did things when I was a Republican. And I... I've always tried to be a, a very even-handed thinker, you know, an independent thinker. And I would see Republicans just having fits and screaming and hollering about things because the Democrats would achieve their end, but they were smart. Instead of trying to do it uh, through Congress, instead of trying to do it through the executive branch, they would go through the legal system. They would uh, instigate lawsuits and they would pursue it and ultimately it would end up in the Supreme Court. And when the issue of gay marriage was on the table, and I remember people even on Facebook and stuff screaming and hollering because George W. Bush says he's against gay marriage. And Obama, when he first ran, said that he did not support gay marriage. And I remember saying, if you understood how our government is designed to work, you would not be running around like a chicken with your head chopped off just because some politician says they're pro or against. And it drives me insane that so many people in this country are so ignorant of our constitution. They are so ignorant of how our government works 
that they're constantly voting for president because they think this one person is going to be able to change the world. And they're going to be able to change everything. And it's impossible, impossible for that person to do that unless, unless they have an extremely uh, large majority uh, in support. And unless those people are really unified and, you know, really sticking together, because you can see right now the Democrats have the slightest majority, and yet they're not unified enough. They still got two holdouts uh, that are blocking up everything for the entire country. But when you understand how our country works, when you understand how our government is designed to work, politicians a lot of times say things just for the simple fact of they're trying to keep their base supporting them. That's it. George W. Bush, I guarantee you, he probably couldn't care less about gay marriage. Gay marriage probably doesn't offend him no more than nothing. But he has to say what he has to say or else he's going to lose a lot of the support of his base. They're not going to come out and vote when it's time to vote because they're not going to be excited about him. So he has to say certain things to maintain his base. Same exact thing is true on the liberal side. Same exact thing is true of uh, people in the liberal area. They have to say certain things about Roe versus Wade. They've got to say certain things about affirmative action. They've got to say certain things about, you know, whatever issues in order to keep their base energized and in order to keep uh, their support congealed, you know. Um, but when you understand how our government works and you watch how the Democrats over the decades have been very smart. They use the entire system. The Republicans have always wanted to take the top, to take the, uh, the executive branch, to take the Congress, the legislative branch, so that they can establish oligar uh, oligarchy. They want the whole country to be run by a handful of very wealthy people, and they all say, well, we know what's best for you, and we'll do for you what what needs to be done, because after all, we know what's best. And that is not going to change, folks. The reality is right now, if you look carefully, I promise you, you will see that the Democratic Party is the only party in America that sincerely genuinely wants to retain our Constitution and wants to preserve our constitutional democracy. And you need to understand that. And if I can influence one single person to vote smart in every election from this day forward, because I'm telling you right now, this old Republican boy will never vote Republican again so long as I live. I don't care who is running. And I used to split my ticket. When I first even left the Republican Party, I would split my ticket. Sometimes I'd vote for a good guy, you know, on the Republican side that I liked. And, but no more, no more. Because it has become painfully obvious to me that the plan that I now for a number of years have seen uh, afoot within the Republican Party is in full motion. It's in full gear. And the minute they're able to accomplish their end, they're going to do it, folks. And we're in deep trouble. The minute the Republicans are able to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish, we are in huge trouble especially members of the LGBT community, especially people of color and minorities in this country. Uh, so I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you. Please read the Federalist Papers. If you don't want to read it, because it is kind of heavy reading at times, the language and the wording, um, it, it can be, you know, a little heavy to read. If you don't want to read it, they do offer... Um, what do they call that when they read it aloud? Audio. Audio, yeah. They do offer audio books uh, of the Federalist Papers, so you can actually listen to it. 
but read it, listen to it, see what was going on when this nation was founded. And you'll hear the, the authors of these papers, I'm telling you, they nail it right on the head when they talk about a lot of what we're seeing in the country today. And uh, read this though, this will help you to get a better understanding of what this nation was founded upon, the, the obstacles we faced from the very beginning, and it will help you to understand that what we're going through today is a battle that has been ongoing now for nearly two and a half centuries. There's nothing new under the sun. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to let you go for now. God bless you. Uh, God bless America. Let's be in prayer for our leadership right now, especially with everything happening in the Ukraine. And uh, just pray that God will give Biden and our uh, Secretary of State, our State Department, and our military leaders divine wisdom, understanding, and direction so they can make the right choices and the right decisions at this time. Okay? God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll talk to you soon.